Welcome back to Goliath. Today we're going over device certificate provisioning and storage. And Mike's going to walk us through some of this and actually show us it working on hardware. What do you got for us, Mike? Yeah, so I think the interesting thing is last time that we showed off just how the certificates worked with Goliath, we were using hard-coded certificates. So they are programmed right into the firmware binary and then uploaded to the device. But that's really not going to work in the real world. And it's not a good practice, even if you could somehow make it work, because it would mean a unique set of firmware for every different device because their credentials are baked into it. So what you want to do is separate those out. And today we're going to show you one way that we approach using a file system on your microcontroller to store the certificates separate from the actual firmware. That's great. And what is this? Uh, what is the hardware we'll actually be working on here? Yeah, so we're actually going to use uh, NRF52840 DK, which is right here. This one has an ESP32 as an external Wi-Fi modem on this, but really whatever networking that you're going to use is going to work. Um, I actually picked this device because it doesn't have like any special crypto hardware on there. Um, and we're going to see a little demonstration of that uh, once we get everything up and running on it. Okay, great. This um, anything else? people need to know about certificates in the background as well. Like, so we've, we have blog posts about certificates and you can go read that. There's documentation you're gonna point out, but a certificate is basically a key to get your thing on a Goliath, right? Yeah, that's right. And we use ECDSA, which is a really strong form of elliptical curve uh, encryption. And it's uh, kind of like industry standard. You're gonna see it uh, leading the way and keeping your devices safe. It's not necessarily hard to work with, it is just a lot to kind of wrap yourself around the concepts at first. And uh, we've what we've done is in our Goliath Zephyr SDK right here, we actually have in the sample folder um, the ability to go and test out uh, this encryption anywhere. So you could go to just our hello, which is like the first thing we usually recommend people running. And you'll see they have PSK, which you can think of as like a username and password type of encryption, uh, but also down here, the instructions for doing certificate based. Uh, but like I said, this is hard coded and we want to uh, not use that in production. So as you start getting more serious about your fleet design, you'll want to check out uh, this other sample that we have here, this certificate provisioning example. Uh, and this is going to walk you through everything you need to know to get your device up and running. Uh, we have a few different options, the ESP32, uh, this one that we're working on today, which is the NRF52840 plus the ES ESP32. If you're looking for cellular, we have an NRF9160 DK. Um, and there is a, uh, a virtual device using uh, QMU um, down here as well. Uh, but of course, the first thing you're going to need, Chris, is the certificate itself. And we're not going to talk too much today about generating the certificate, but we do have a link here to the Goliath documentation that walks through all of that. So I've done all of these steps in advance. Uh, the first one is to generate a uh, root certificate that is like the project um, level of your Goliath uh, experience. And then you will need a different device certificate for each device in your fleet. And so this walks through that. Uh, what I have uh, highlighted right here is the one piece of information you're going to need when you generate these certificates, which is what is the um, project ID of my project on Goliath. So I have a freshly generated project here. You'll notice there are no devices in here, um, the digital representation on the cloud of the devices, because those are going to be created the first time the device logs in. Goliath doesn't need to know anything about your devices as they roll off of uh, the production line that'll happen through the magic of certificates. Uh, but we can go down to project settings down at the bottom, and that's where we're going to get this one piece of information, uh, the project ID, and add that to um, the different commands that we use to generate the certificates. And at the end of it, we're going to go again to the project settings page to certificates, and we're going to upload the public root certificate, uh, not the private key. You keep the private key used to assign your devices, but the public part of the certificate. And uh, if I look at um, the directory that I've been generating uh, all of my code in here, let's do uh, get status. You can see here are um, all of the device certificates that I generated for this one device. And here is the root certificate. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab this Goliath certificate.pem file and upload it to Goliath right now. All right. And you can see already it's uploaded to Goliath. Uh, this one expires in 1,024 days. You can uh, set that date up when you generate it. You also have the ability to add more certificates. So if you want to have a number of different root certificates based on where the devices are produced or what customer they're sending to or whatever other reason, you have the option to do that here. But once you've done this part of it, the actual Goliath cloud is all set up and you don't need to worry about it. The rest happens on the device. 
So if I go in to uh, build this, let's see my build command here. Uh, this is the build command. I'm basically just giving it the name of the board and uh, setting it off to go. I don't think we need to watch it building right now. We will watch it uh, flashing because I deleted the code, the test code off the device. So just, just so we should be starting fresh and uh, it won't take long for this to get running. I should open up a terminal while we're waiting. Yeah, and just a little bit about this hardware as well. So, so you have a, uh, the basically ESP32 is acting as the Wi-Fi coprocessor because the NRF52840 is actually a Bluetooth device, but it is in vanilla Zephyr, I think you said? Yep, that's right. And uh, we use this for testing a lot. It's a pretty stable platform. But like I said, there's a uh, really what you want to bring to Goliath uh, is your choice and the certificate should work with any of those choices. Uh, now we were running for the first time and you can see the devices reported um, that it doesn't have certificates. So for instance, if you were pushing out over their updates, it would uh, it, it would then boot up and look for the file system and it would find the pre-existing. But since we haven't previously set up a file system on this device, we need to make sure that that's all ready to go. I'm gonna go back to the certificate provisioning um, example and get the instructions here, which is just a file system, make directory, and then this directory name. And so this just tells the device, hey, I'm using a file system, make sure that that area is ready to, to receive data. Um, you could, you, there's other ways you could do this. You could make it so when you flash it, it, it does this automatically, but we want people to know what's going on under the hood. Um, and so we, we implemented it this way. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna halt the logs because the log messages are gonna come across the same um, USB connection that I'm gonna uh, upload the certificates with, and we don't want the logs to interfere with them. Uh, so now that the device is uh, kind of all staged and ready to go, I'm just going to exit from my terminal window and I'm going to go down and we're using a program called MCU Manager um, in order to upload these. And so I'm going to grab the MCU Manager uh, command. I'm on my system, I actually have a kind of a derivative of MCU Manager installed called my newt manager, uh, but it is uh, basically the same program. So I'm just going to change that command. I need to tell this program where the device is, um, what serial port it's on. And I know that it's on dev TTY ACM zero. Um, and then the uh, there's two sets of uh, endpoints here. One is the actual location of the source file. And so I know that's in this directory and it's called, it's the certificate in DER format. And then this last part is um, where it's gonna be written to on the device. And we should see a confirmation for the device that that has been written. Uh, the other command that's down here is very similar, although it's for the private key, not for the client certificate. So I'm going to use the same command and just change my values for the private key. And that's the private, private key for the device itself, or is that the private key for the overall project? Yep, that's the private key for the device itself. So that's what uh, the device used to sign communications that it's sending up to Goliath. format. All right, so I'm uploading the key and that's confirmed. Now, if we go back into our serial terminal, we're not going to see anything because we turned logs off. So let's um, just reboot to undo that and let's spell cold correctly. All right, now we should see the device come online and it should find those certificates, which it did. Here they are. And you can verify the size of them uh, to make sure they match the actual size of the binaries in your machine. Now we're waiting for just a minute for it to upload. And remember, we don't have any devices on this project. Oh, we do have a device <laughs> because uh, while I was Bad pulling timing. that up, yeah, while I was pulling that up, we actually connected. So uh, we started our connection. We threw this error right here. And this error is thrown because um, this device is kind of slow, as I mentioned before. And while it's crunching through all the math that it needs to do to verify those certificates, it ignores the incoming data buffer. So it's getting a, a buffer overflow uh, but you'll just get it during that handshake process. So uh, we won't see this again. And now you can see we're getting these send hello messages. This device that wasn't here before and Goliath had never heard of before this uh, was added because the certificate was verified against the public root certificate, uh, the CA certificate that we uh, previously uploaded. And if we go and you know say, look at the logs on this, we can see here are those hello messages that we're sending on our logs. So we do have a successful connection. It's uh, made with industry standard encryption and uh, a over the air firmware update driven from Goliath will not overwrite these certificates. They will be persistent. Awesome. Yeah. So, and the, when the device showed up to Goliath's front door and it presented the certificate, the 
the Goliath uh, backend basically said, oh, you don't exist yet. I'm going to make you a new virtual representation. That won't happen every single time because now this certificate is recognized by by the backend as well, right? Yep, that's right. And so once this all of this information um, gets recognized by the backend, it is given a database entry and then we track things like it will tell you when it was last reported. Uh, it was tell you when it was created. So this creation date um, was just a few minutes ago right now, but as we go forward, you'll see when it was created. And um, I think the really cool thing about it is you don't have to deal with some, um, you know, like really intricately timed method of creating the devices on the cloud backend to match when they're uh, manufactured, do they come online? You basically just create the device certificates that are gonna go on each device coming off the line and they'll get added to your cloud automatically whenever right. they power up right. the first time. That's great. Uh, that's really great. Yeah, I think the manufacturing focus is also something that, you know, we're going to see as, uh, you know, we have customers that are putting stuff in production. This just really makes things even easier and uh, people could try it out way before they're in production as well, which is what we expect mm -hmm. people to do with this sample. Yeah, I mean, you should definitely try this out now and uh, make sure that the certificates work the way that you think because you uh, should be designing your firmware with this in mind. But the nice thing is all this is here now, even if you're not towards production, you can test out those things that you're gonna have to deal with later on starting today. Awesome. Anything else people should know about uh, certificates or device security on Goliath? We are secure by default. We won't even let your devices connect to uh, Goliath Cloud unless they are encrypted. And I think that's going to save you a lot of time, trouble, and headaches down the road. Awesome. Well, thanks for showing us this, Mike. And uh, I'm sure people will enjoy trying out this sample on the uh, Goliath SDK. Yeah. All right. Great. We'll see you next time, Chris.